Hey, what's up? I think by the time you see this, the appropriate phrase would be Salamat Malam? I'm guessing, I don't know, I don't know. It's definitely true for me, because we're, it's, it's, we're half past midnight, we're on the way to 1am. Um, I did OPIC, uh, Elite Bata doing that, and uh, you said, hey, come check out Phi, so we're over here at Phi. Um, and there's so many things to, you could spend your, you know, your whole life on the guitar. There's just so many different things to do and, and different ways to approach the instrument. But something I'm going to talk about is the, this, this er, thumbnail here, this opening picture. Oh, I need to write like a note. Don't, don't cut out the picture. Sometimes I do dumb things and cut out what I'm actually talking about. Don't cut intro. Okay. So this whole thing of uh, a raised left leg, and then we've got I have my foot's on a footstool, and my guitar is now diagonal, right? Which is the way he's playing. Um, something we've never talked about is why. Why do that? Like, what's the what's the purpose to do it? Uh, the reason why is because it improves your ability to play the entire length of the fretboard with a nice amount of command. So now there's a trade-off. There's a trade-off is that these top three or four frets, you could maybe argue they're harder to play than if you just held the guitar like on your right leg and played it like this. But the, the upside, the positive is that for the other 80% of the fingerboard, it's much easier to play. And I can give you a physics, uh, a, a real world application of why that is the case. So look at where the guitar is, right where the fingerboard is. It's it's approaching the center of my chest. It's, it's in the middle of my body and it's close to me. So it's by my sternum and it's also just a few inches away. The best example of why that is effective is if you've ever had a jar that was hard to open, right? What do we all instinctively do if there's a, jo a jar that is, is tough to open? Is we grab it and we pull it close to us and we pull it close to the middle of our chest. And that gives us the most torque, the most amount of energy to attempt to open that. So it's the same thing with the guitar where if, the, if you're ascending a scale or something or you're playing in the higher register, uh, higher registers are typically harder to play. But when your guitar is tilted at a 45 degree angle, you find that your hand is approaching the center of your body and you have more force to play the harder passages with. And that's the whole reason, uh, in my opinion, that's the number one reason why you play the guitar at a tilted angle as opposed to just 90 degrees from your body. It doesn't mean 90 degrees is bad, it's for different purposes. Anyways, let's see what's going on with Phi and uh, the Alovo. Oh, tremolo. Ooh, nice harmonics. His opening, the tremolo, we will 100% talk about that, but I want to hear some more. Thumb position. He has some wicked stretches in this. Which when you see him using thumb position, the only reason he's using thumb position in this setup, where he's not tapping all over the place, 
He's only using thumb position so he can stretch further. Uh, I've had to use thumb position a couple of times. It's not comfortable. So you only use it because you need to reach notes you couldn't otherwise reach with your normal stretch. See, look at that. That's from set. That's he starts you from the second fret with this thumb to the seventh fret with two fingers. Try that. You're gonna need a thumb. Well, he's doing tremolo. The piece is beautiful. If you want to know if I think it's beautiful, of course it's beautiful. Do I think he's playing well? Yes, I do. But I like talking about things that I'm passionate about, and uh, tremolo is one of those things. So let's talk about tremolo for a second. So what is tremolo? Tremolo is when you play one note with your thumb, and then you repeat three notes with your other, in, uh, other digits, I would say ring, middle, index. There's other ways to do it, but that's the way I would do it. And what you're aiming for is a steady set of 16th notes. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... So I would recommend almost do that. Let me back up a little bit. Do that with a muted string. So it's thumb, ring, middle, index. Right? Faster. I can feel my nails are a little misshapen. So, um... Right? That's the idea. The idea is you, you kind of, to me, what I think of, there's many, there's many ways to describe it. To me, what I like to think of is a guitar player plus a mandolin player. That's... On classical guitar, that is tremolo. Thumb and repeated ring middle index. That's sick. He's getting all that bass out of his pinky. He's tapping against the guitar with his pinky on his right hand. That's super hard. I'm not going to demonstrate it because I can't do it. I haven't practiced that. That's I know about it, but man, no, that's like its own it's, its own world. And I'm not going to demonstrate it, uh, but one thing I want you to notice about this, his thumb technique is he always gets his thumb... Actually, I will, I will show you. This is kind of hard to describe. You don't, in my opinion, and he's doing the same thing I'm talking about, which is you don't use your thumb when you need it. You transition to your thumb right before you need it. So let's say I was going to go up here. Right? Now let's say on this note, I need a F sharp, or a G, whatever. I would actually transition before that. Right, I could play it this way. Uh, that's kind of awkward. So what I'm going to do is, here on the easier note, go ahead and transition to the thumb. I'm 
making up the music. That's why this sounds weird, because I'm just making it up. So the key with your thumb is you get it ready right before you need it so you can use it. Otherwise, it, take, it takes too much time to go from behind the neck to in front of the neck to on the strings. Planning. A lot of guitar playing is planning. You plan it in advance for, uh, you plan it in, in advance for the problems you're going to encounter with the music. That's a huge stretch you just made without the thumb. That's exactly what I just showed you. Second fret with the, th the thumb to the upper melodic notes on the seventh fret. Whoa. pretty. Makes me think of, uh, I don't know, like a foggy, dark walk through. Well, it couldn't be the woods. It would have to be movie woods. In the real life, dark woods, you can't see anything. So we would need like, you know, lights and junk. But it's it kind of reminds me of, of spooky background music, but not crazy spooky. Not like the ghosts are coming for you, but spooky like... Spook, actually maybe spooky is the wrong word. Darkness, where you're lost in thought on something, but your, inten your attention is not discreetly applied to it. In other words, you don't have like a clarity of what you're thinking. Your mind's kind of meandering through this little darkness environment. Because <clears throat> it's not sad and it's not scary, but it's damn sure not happy and it's not adventurous. So we gotta find like a different set of words for that. That's the best I can do. But uh, I guess that's why I'm not an author. Because apparently I do not have a command of language. But that's cool. Because it's not required to have a command of language to be here. As a guy, that's me, I'm a guy. In a box, speaking to you across the world, this shit's always fun. I'll see you in another video. I'm gonna hit this button and I'm gonna disappear. Let's go. One, two, three.